Hello visual learners! In today's video, we're going over everything you need to know about ACE inhibitors. Make sure you stick around till the end as I go over some helpful memorization tips and key facts that will surely show up on exams. So if you're ready to ace all your exam questions about ACE inhibitors, let's color and learn! ACE is short for angiotensin converting enzyme, but did you know that the active ingredient in the first ACE inhibitor, captopril, was originally derived from snake venom? Yes, captopril was based on the venom of the poisonous Brazilian viper. Eek! I'm sure that made captopril captivating to study. Let's color in this title in a snakeskin pattern in light of this fun fact. The drugs in this class are easy to recognize as they all end in the suffix pril, such as lisinopril, enalapril, ramapril, and benazapril, just to name a few. This is the most common class of cardiology medications used, so therefore more than likely it will show up on your exams. Our visual anchor for this class is an ACE card. The drugs in this class are used for hypertension, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, prevention of renal disease in diabetic patients, as well as heart attack management. Color in these images to help you retain this information. Some contraindications and precautions to keep in mind. ACE inhibitors should not be used in patients who are pregnant as it can cause fetal toxicity. You also want to avoid it in breastfeeding. Think of this mnemonic to help you remember this. A stands for avoid in couples expecting, mainly the moms. Also, patients on ACE inhibitors, make sure to check their allergies. It is contraindicated in patients with a history of angioedema or sudden swelling that usually occurs in the face, lip, or tongue. It requires a 36-hour washout period when switched to and from Entresto, the combination medication consisting of Secubitril and Balsartan. It should not be used in patients with bilateral renal artery stenosis. Why? Well, because it can worsen renal function in patients who already have this underlying issue. Concurrent use of aliskarin with ACE inhibitors can increase the risk of hyperkalemia, so this is also a no-no. But how does ACE inhibitors work? Let's think back to what ACE stands for again. Yep, that's right. ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme. ACE is an enzyme that converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, a potent vasoconstrictor. So if we inhibit ACE, it will also block angiotensin 2 formation, leading to vasodilation and reduction in blood pressure. Let's go over that again. Angiotensin II is a hormone that causes vasoconstriction. You can think of the Roman numeral II in angiotensin II as if it looks like a narrow blood vessel to help you recall the hormone's actions on vasoconstriction. ACE inhibitors block the formation of this hormone by blocking the enzyme that converts it. All right, now moving on to side effects. We are gonna use the mnemonic top card since our visual anchor is the ace in a deck of playing cards. Remember, the top card is an ace. Top card stands for, T is for teratogenic. Remember, this medication cannot be used in what kind of women? Yes, that's right. It should not be used in patients who are pregnant as it can cause fetal toxicity. O is for orthostatic hypotension, which is common for a blood pressure lowering medication. P is for potassium increase. Definitely, definitely know this fact, especially when given with other potassium sparing medications. C is for cough. If a dry persistent cough continues, patients may be switched to a different agent, such as an ARB or an angiotensin receptor blocker. A is for what? Yep, A is for angioedema. R is for renal impairment. It's important to monitor renal function when initiating ACE inhibitors. And D is for dizziness. All 
All right, finally, some counseling points to keep in mind. ACE inhibitors can be taken with or without food, but preferably at the same time every day. We wanna monitor potassium levels, right? Why? Due to the side effect of hyperkalemia. We also wanna monitor for creatinine, blood pressure, and hypersensitivity reactions. Educate the patient that a dry cough can occur, but if it persists or is bothersome, then let their healthcare provider know. Seek medical attention if symptoms of angioedema such as facial, lip, or tongue swelling occurs because they are experiencing a bad allergic reaction to the medication. Alright guys, that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, click that subscribe button for more. Let me know if you have questions in the comments and I will be happy to answer them. And remember to never stop having fun while you learn. If you're interested in getting more information from our Top 200 Drugs Made Easy coloring book, I will leave a link to the product below in the description and I will see you in the next video.